ExxonMobil has long been criticized for allegedly hiding what it knew about climate change. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 scientific conspiracy theories that turned out to be true. They had to figure out a way, Joe, to make a profit on a product that they could not sell in America. For this list, we'll be looking at the times scientific conspiracy theories ended up having an inkling of truth. Which unproven conspiracies could you see on this list in the future? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. The sugar industry paid off scientists. It's hard to imagine now with everything we know about diabetes and dental hygiene, but sugar was once viewed by many as a healthy food. The reason? Sugar producers and sweet companies pushed fat as the enemy instead. The Journal of the American Medical Association reveals that scientists were paid in the 1960s to play down the link between sugar and heart disease and instead make saturated fat the culprit. In 2016, a researcher at the University of California, San Francisco found that the Sugar Research Foundation funded a 1967 Harvard study downplaying sugar's impact on heart health, instead pointing to saturated fat as a cause of heart disease. Meanwhile, Coca-Cola has been paying researchers millions to minimize the relationship between sugary sodas and obesity as recently as 2015. Coke has poured millions into funding research that says exercise, not diet, is the best way to fight obesity, and that's just one example. Unlike the taste of their products, these companies' ethics were anything but sweet. Number 19. The CIA experimented on cats. Atomic Kitten isn't just a girl group. During the height of the spy film craze in the 1960s, the CIA devised an interesting use for our feline friends, turning them into bionic carrier pigeons. In an initiative called Operation Acoustic Kitty, they inserted recording devices into cats so that they could eavesdrop on government officials and bring back secret intel. But in an extremely predictable turn of events, they had little interest in the pursuit of espionage and continued acting like normal cats, causing the tactic to be abandoned. On a Catwoman scale of Eartha Kitt to Zoe Kravitz, it's safe to say that this experiment was a Halle Berry-level misfire. You boys thought you could come in here and steal all these beautiful things? What a perfect idea. Number 18. The U.S. Navy sprayed chemicals into the Bay Area. San Francisco is known for its fog, but it's also been host to sinister substances. One day in 1950, 11 Bay Area residents checked into the same hospital with urinary tract infections. While 10 recovered, one died due to a heart valve infection. Finally, in 1977, the U.S. Army revealed it was the result of a biological warfare test called Operation Sea Spray. Weeks before the mysterious infections were reported, the Navy released two types of bacteria off a ship to test their impact on the city's population. Additionally, the Army announced several other bioweapon experiments across the country from the 1950s and 60s that had gone undetected. While President Nixon put a stop to the program in 1969, this revelation isn't any less terrifying. Number 17. Breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. It's magically delicious, but how about nutritious? Marshmallowy Lucky Charms, a tasty part of this good breakfast. That's me Lucky Charms. Magically delicious. While there are plenty of legitimate health benefits to starting the day with a balanced breakfast, that hasn't always been the reason it was pushed so hard. The idea of breakfast being good for health, especially weight loss, has persisted for over a century. After meat-heavy breakfasts went on the decline due to their digestive difficulty during the Industrial Revolution, James Caleb Jackson and John Harvey Kellogg changed the game with flaked corn cereal. As Seventh-day Adventists, they believed that a bland diet could aid in abstinence and ward off impure thoughts. No sex, no meat, no alcohol, no sugar, no, uh, anything uh, prurient or sensual. Furthermore, emphasizing cereal potentially helped the U.S. government in their meat rationing efforts during World War II. So don't worry too badly the next time you miss out on a breakfast of champions. It just might be a clever marketing tactic. Number 16. The CIA created a heart attack gun. Guns and arrests go hand in hand, but cardiac arrests, not so much. So-called heart attack guns seemed like the stuff of James Bond movies, until a 1975 CIA testimony revealed their existence. 
During the hearing, CIA Director William Colby and Idaho Senator Frank Church unveiled a handgun that shot frozen darts containing shellfish toxin. Does this pistol uh, fire the dart? Yes, it does, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, that, the round thing at the top is obviously the sight. The rest of it is uh, what is practically a, uh, a normal 45, although it's, it's special. Upon entering the body, the poison would leave behind a red dot and give off the impression of a heart attack, allowing the shooter to get away untraced, at least until the autopsy. And a special one was developed which potentially would be able to uh, enter the target without perception. However, while there's evidence of the gun's existence, there aren't any confirmed cases of it being used in high-profile assassinations. Number 15. The CIA administered fake vaccines. Vaccines have long been a favorite subject for conspiracy theorists, and this might be the closest they've come to vindication. In 2011, the CIA conducted a hepatitis B vaccination program in Pakistan. The catch? The vaccines were fake, and people's DNA was being collected as an effort to retrieve Osama bin Laden's whereabouts. The CIA set up a fake vaccination program in the town where it thought bin Laden was hiding. The idea was to secure a DNA sample from bin Laden or a family member. The scheme was unsuccessful in more ways than one. Besides doing little to track down the al-Qaeda leader, it's still cited as a reason to distrust the U.S. government when it comes to other, more recent vaccines. While bin Laden was eventually located by other means that same year, the mission has done plenty to dissuade people from getting the jab. A growing number of people say they won't take a vaccine. I don't want to inject anything like this into my body. This is linked to declining trust in scientific experts and political leaders. Number 14. Planned obsolescence. Out with the old, in with the new. It's long been speculated that tech companies like Apple and Samsung have purposely slowed down their existing gadgets after releasing new updates and models. Most people think, you know, my phone is slow, I need to go buy a new phone. But the problem doesn't lie necessarily with the phone, it's just with the battery in the phone. And while the evidence was purely anecdotal at first, the arrival of iOS 10 in 2016 opened up the floodgates, or should we say, battery gate. Months later, Apple admitted that the iPhone 6 and 6S struggled to adjust to the new update, causing slow phones and drained batteries. I think it's on them to do a much better job of helping people understand what goes on with these very expensive products as they get older. In the years since, the company has continued to face class action lawsuits and investigations related to the incident. The term planned obsolescence goes back to the 1930s, but confirmation of it in the digital age showed people they weren't going crazy after all. At this demonstration in Paris, Apple is portrayed as the evil empire, accused of tax evasion and cheating customers. France has moved to make planned obsolescence a crime and has placed Apple under formal investigation. Number 13, the US employed Nazi scientists. As Europe began the denazification process after World War II, the United States went in a rather different direction. While preparing for the Cold War against the Soviet Union in the second half of the 1940s, then-President Harry S. Truman allowed over 1,600 German scientists and engineers to live and work in the U.S. Operation Paperclip became a classified military program to bring them to the United States. It also had a public face, so there was on the one hand the truth about the program kept secret, and on the other hand the idea that we'll tell the the public that these are the good Germans. However, several of them were former Nazis, now working on projects for the American military. Their involvement with the Nazi party varied, with some having little and others being full-blown leaders. One scientist, Hubertus Struckold, even experimented on humans in concentration camps before getting to rebuild his life in the U.S. as the father of space medicine. People love a good comeback story, but this one is understandably controversial. In short, our space program owes a lot to a careful collaboration between ex-Nazis and American Jews. Number 12. Gas companies knew about climate change. From sugary sodas to cancerous cigarettes, corporations have long seeked to suppress harmful truths about their products. But rather than impacting personal health, this one had global implications. Beginning in the 1970s, oil and gas giant ExxonMobil put its money behind climate change research, funding groups that dismissed human-caused global warming while knowing it existed. And they've discovered that their climate scientists, their in-house climate scientists at Exxon, were actually very good at predicting how the climate was likely to change in the future. They even had a hand in the Global Climate Coalition, which fought the Kyoto Protocol. 
a treaty that pledged to lower greenhouse gas emissions. ExxonMobil's climate denial continued through the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, first admitting that global warming posed an environmental threat in 2007. To this day, climate change's treatment as a debate instead of a consensus can be traced back to the lobbying of fossil fuel companies. It cast doubt on whether climate change was real, it discounted human impacts, and they suggested there was nothing practical to do about it anyway. Number 11, weather control programs. The history of the U.S. government's attempts to control the weather began after the Civil War. In the late 1800s, an American engineer collected dozens of stories of rain following large battles. To recreate the effect, a general set off $9,000 worth of explosives in Texas. The results were inconclusive. Where people believe that all of the natural disasters that have been occurring recently are linked to a secret climate controlling weapon used by the U.S. Army. The better part of a century later, the Pentagon incorporated weather control into their strategy for the Vietnam War. Operation Sober Popeye lasted for five years. Using planes, the military tried to seed rain clouds over Vietnam. The silver iodide particles mimic ice crystals and provide the scaffolding of sorts for ice to form. That ice then grows very efficiently by consuming the supercool liquid drops. Usually, after about 20 minutes, they grow large enough and fall out of the cloud as precipitation. If they could extend the monsoon season, it could provide a strategic advantage. A series of news stories revealed the program. Six years later, in 1978, weather-based environmental warfare was banned around the world. So maybe the lesson learned here is we shouldn't meddle with forces that we don't really understand because we may not like the result. Number 10. The CIA drugged citizens without their knowledge. John's in the sky with diamonds? As part of a larger program on mind control in the 1950s and 60s, the CIA set their sights on an unlikely population to test the effects of LSD, clients of sex workers. The CIA wanted to understand more about brainwashing. It had money and it was ready to fund experiments. By paying ladies of the night to lure in unsuspecting men, the agency was able to study how the substance could affect people who didn't know they'd taken it. More specifically, whether they were likely to give up compromising information. Hey, Sugar, you looking for a date? As the sex workers drugged their patrons, CIA consultant George White would analyze their behavior from behind a one-way mirror. What is the extent of these brainwashing experiments? How did the CIA become involved in such far-reaching and disturbing research? Of all the shady CIA experiments, this one quite possibly has the wildest code name, and that's saying a lot, Operation Midnight Climax. Number 9. Canada tried to create actual gaydar. In the mid-20th century, gay men and women had to keep their orientation secret or risk losing their social standing, jobs, or even their lives. I mean, there's a whole bunch of possible ways in which someone could have a character weakness, right, or some sort of addiction, but the one that the Canadian state focuses on is homosexuality. It was the key focus, not just a focus. In an attempt to ferret out gay men in the military or other government institutions from the 1950s on, the Canadian government hired Professor Frank Robert Wake. Wake invented what they would ultimately call the fruit machine. This is the attempt by the government to determine and find a technology or a set of tests that would scientifically and objectively be able to determine who was gay or lesbian. Today, we'd call it gaydar. Forget it, he's gay. What? How can you tell? I just know these things. I've got what they call gaydar. Wake would strap men into a chair, force them to look at sexual images, and measure their physical reactions. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police investigated thousands of government employees as a result. The, the fact of policy was that if you were homosexual, you were out. It was just, it, that's what it came down to. You were out. There was no discretion, and the Mounties got really carried away with this. Many men lost their jobs due to the dubious test results until it was discontinued. Number eight, the U.S. government poisoned alcohol during Prohibition. Ratified in 1919, the 18th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution prohibited alcohol. What do you think about Prohibition, Mr. Ness? Do you drink, Mr. Ness? Come <laughs> on, Mr. Ness, answer the question. It's not just a showpiece, and I'll tell you exactly how I feel about Prohibition. It is the law of the land. The period of Prohibition would last until 1933, ending with the ratification of the 21st Amendment. 
Despite the law, illegal smuggling, manufacturing, and distribution of drinking alcohol was rampant. To satisfy a thirsty nation, gangsters like Al Capone operate illicit distilleries and smuggle in liquor from other countries. In an attempt to curtail drinking, the U.S. government tried something radical. Even before 1920, they'd mandated that extra contaminants be added to industrial alcohol to prevent its consumption. What the government then looked at was, can we do something to this alcohol that makes it much riskier to drink and use that essentially as a chemical enforcement of prohibition? In 1926, they added new regulations requiring the inclusion of more toxic poisons. Manufacturers added benzene, mercury, and methanol. Unsurprisingly, this stopped neither the bootleggers nor the drinkers. An estimated 10,000 people died, and many others were blinded. Number 7. Big Tobacco Hid Evidence Linking Smoking to Cancer Today, the connection between smoking cigarettes and lung cancer is well known. These ads are hitting television networks and major newspapers across the country. There is no safe cigarette. All directly addressing the negative impacts of smoking. All cigarettes cause cancer, lung disease, heart attacks, and premature death. Packs of cigarettes sold in the United States must now have Surgeon General warning labels. It wasn't always that way. Big Tobacco spent years fighting the government on this decision, claiming innocence and a lack of evidence. As it turns out, that was a decades-old lie. He's been testing the link between nicotine and lung cancer for 30 years and hasn't found any conclusive results. The man's a genius. He could disprove gravity. The cigarette companies had internal studies dating back to the 1950s on the effects of smoking. Cigarette smoke contains harmful substances like tar, cyanide, lead, and arsenic. However, Big Tobacco knew in 1959 that it also contained a radioactive isotope, polonium-210. Cigarette companies could have removed it, but doing so would have made absorbing nicotine harder and affected their profits. Consumers cough up for higher prices because they crave the drug in tobacco nicotine. And without nicotine addiction, there would simply be no tobacco industry. And the industry knows this. Number six, the U.S. government investigates UFOs. The truth is out there. For years, conspiracy theories about aliens have filled newsletters and online forums. Are we alone in the universe? Impossible. When you consider the wonders that exist all around us. Voodoo priests of Haiti, the Tibetan numerologists of Appalachia, the unsolved mysteries of unsolved mysteries. The truth is out there. Aliens exist and the government is secretly studying them. As it turns out, that's half true. The U.S. government admitted in 2017 that from 2007 to 2012, there was a $22 million investigation. The Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program collected data on UFOs. The DOD not offering much more info, saying the aerial phenomena observed in the videos remains characterized as unidentified. Also in 2017, several remarkable videos were leaked from U.S. Navy sightings of UFOs, which were eventually confirmed by the Pentagon as authentic. In 2020, a successor program was formed, the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, replaced in 2022 with the All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. What they're calling unexplained aerial phenomena. Look at that thing. It's rotating. Two videos showing objects spotted by Navy fighter pilots during training flights in 2015. Number 5. The U.S. government experimented on black men. For four decades, the CDC and the United States Public Health Service conducted the Tuskegee study, enlisting 600 impoverished black men in Alabama in 1932. Free, huh? You say free? Yeah. Doctor is fine and free as any you can get anywhere. The men, mostly sharecroppers, were deceived about its real purpose to study syphilis. Two-thirds of the men had latent syphilis, but rather than informing them or treating them with penicillin, researchers monitored them and gave them fake treatments for quote-unquote bad blood. That is bad blood. That's what we're checking to see if y'all got so we can get rid of it. Over 100 died of syphilis-related medical problems. 40 of their wives contracted the disease, and 19 children were born with it. A whistleblower revealed the true nature of the study, which was shut down in 1972. President Clinton offered an apology from the U.S. government in 1997. On behalf of the American people, what the United States government did was shameful, and I am sorry. Number four, the United States' human radiation experiments. 
At the dawn of the nuclear age in the 1940s, governments were desperate for data. In the US, the Atomic Energy Commission, or AEC, turned to human experimentation, commissioning dozens of studies. But the Department of Defense was very interested in the effects of total body irradiation. Because if there's a nuclear war and people get irradiated, are they going to be able to function? In one, an MIT professor fed radioactive materials to mentally disabled boys. Researchers at Vanderbilt University gave pregnant women radioactive pills. U.S. soldiers were exposed to radiation. Parents at hospitals were injected with plutonium. And prisoners had their testicles irradiated, leading to birth defects. Many of the prisoners that I interviewed were still in prison. Uh, they had all kinds of, of medical problems and cancers and health issues. In Operation Sunshine, the AEC and U.S. Air Force enlisted agents to steal tissue samples and body parts from 1,500 cadavers, many of them children, whose remains were pillaged without the consent of parents. In 1994, President Bill Clinton oversaw the release of classified records and made a formal apology on behalf of the government. The United States of America offers a sincere apology to those of our citizens who were subjected to these experiments to their families, and to their communities. Number three, Bayer spread HIV. Many conspiracies tend to focus on government cabals. Oftentimes, though, some of the worst secrets come from the private sector. They wanted to keep it secret. They didn't want to publicize something which would be damaging for the company. German pharmaceutical company Bayer has been selling aspirin since 1899. Since that time, they've expanded to all kinds of drugs and medications. In the 1980s, the Bayer-owned company Cutter Biological was selling blood clotting factors for hemophiliacs, but recruiting high-risk donors to manufacture it. The medicine's called Factor 8. It was an, inject an injection medicine that was used for hemophiliacs, mostly children. Children had been born with an incurable hold on, disease. Hold on, Mike. That clotting factor became contaminated with HIV. When the problem was discovered, Cutter declared the response irrational, but switched over to safe, heat-treated products for the Western market. Then they shipped the contaminated products to Latin America and Asia to make a buck. This company knew absolutely that they had a problem with the product. They knew that, that it was infected with AIDS. They dumped it because they wanted to turn this disaster into a profit. Roughly 20,000 patients were infected by Bayer's products. Number two, the government is spying on you. The United States has a long history of mass surveillance. During the Civil Rights Movement, intelligence agencies targeted and sought to silence political dissidents through a program known as COINTELPRO. J. Edgar Hoover ordered a nationwide campaign to disrupt the activities of the new left without telling any of his superiors about it. Many of the techniques were clearly illegal. Burglaries, forged blackmail letters, and threats of violence were used. But leaked information from whistleblowers has revealed surveillance systems in the 21st century that beggar belief. After 9-11, President George W. Bush empowered the NSA to conduct mass surveillance, both foreign and domestic, on an unprecedented scale. The NSA specifically targets the communications of everyone. It ingests them by default. It collects them in its system and it filters them and it analyzes them and it measures them and it stores them for periods of time. This included warrantless wiretapping of telephones. But it's much worse than that, with programs that suck up emails, text messages, and video chats via tech giants, or straight from undersea cables. Combined with their collection of cellular metadata, the NSA has constructed a full-blown digital panopticon. When a call is made, Verizon turns over this information. The phone number, phone serial numbers, the location the call comes from, the time of the call, the duration of the call, and all the same information for the person on the other end of the phone. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number one, the CIA ran mind control experiments. The CIA is a conspiracy boogeyman, and for good reason. Their fearsome reputation owes a lot to the infamous MKUltra program. In the early days of the Cold War, the CIA ordered the creation of a secret program intended to find ways of mind control. 
They funded an army of psychiatric institutions across the United States and Canada to perform experiments on unsuspecting patients. The program was meant to pioneer biochemical and psychological techniques. The CIA wanted to manipulate people in influential positions and to develop a truth serum for interrogation. They gave LSD to volunteers, students, doctors, civilians, and even their own employees. Usually they did so without anyone's informed consent. They tested hypnosis and interrogation techniques. They tested on Canadians using brutal electroshock methods. Massive drug regimens, enforced prolonged sleep, intensive electroshock, largely funded by the Canadian government and the American CIA. They tested on Danes. The horrible program may have never ended if not for the Watergate scandal, which caused widespread panic in Washington, D.C. CIA Director Richard Helms ordered that all records be destroyed in 1973, and only 20,000 escaped destruction. There were congressional hearings here in the United States in the mid-70s after it had been exposed. And during those hearings, the CIA finally admitted that this program existed. They admitted that it was probably not the right thing to do, but they feigned innocence. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.